We have loved the United Kingdom so much that we decided today we would just talk about some of the things that we love. We were recently reunited with our pup. Yeah. If you've been watching our adventures in the UK, thank you. Uh, we had so much fun in the UK. We loved making all of the videos that we made and we have a lot more to come, um, but we have gotten a lot of questions about where we are, where we're going, um, and we're actually home now. We're actually about to set out on a US road trip. So we are gonna kind of be um, putting out some of those videos in between our UK adventures, but those are still going to be continuing uh, for the foreseeable future. But I think that brings us to the first thing that we love, and that is the game shows in the UK. <laughs> I feel like the television in general, but the game shows are a highlight. We last night drove to um, from my parents' house to the town of Medford, Oregon. We are setting out on a road trip, and as soon as we got to the hotel, it made me miss our adventures in the UK. Just because I think like the whole hotel experience is a little bit better there. I think. I mean, we only stayed in, you know, a handful of places, but I just felt like the consistency of the quality in the hotels was better. Uh, I miss some of the aspects of that, like the push buttons on the toilets. But I think the one thing that we both realized last night when we got here and the movie Burlesque was playing, that we really love the game shows and just the television in the UK. Yeah, there, there's a lot of like panel chat, I don't know what you would even call them. They talk shows with comedians and their game shows are a lot of fun. It's just entertaining. Yes, and I think like we have some good game shows here in the US, but I think a lot of those are actually um, US versions of games that already existed in the UK. But specifically, like I felt like we started getting hooked on a couple, like there's that Plinko one. I mean, who doesn't love playing Plinko? <laughs> and then there was, what was that one that we ended up watching? I just feel like every single game show that we watched, we just loved and they were so entertaining. The, the lowest it's one? It's like Reverse Family Feud almost. Yeah, what was that called? I already forgot the name of it. But it was like, you wanted to get the low number. You wanted to know an answer of the trivia question, but you wanted to know like the obscure one that no one else would pick. I'm sure one of you guys can fill us in because we somehow have already blanked on the name of it, but we really, really loved that show and enjoyed just pretty much every hotel experience we had there, partly because of the game shows that we were watching in the evenings. Okay, shall we go? Let's continue our adventures. We drove and we drove and we drove today through California. We've made it to Nevada. I was going to show you the reason why the number two on our list is better in the UK, but we didn't come across the example I was looking for. The bathrooms or the toilets in the UK are so much better, the, the public ones anyways, than the US counterparts. And, and I'm gonna show you why right now. This is what we are working with in the US. Flimsy aluminum doors with little privacy. Do you see how I'm in the stall and I can see outside? I have made eye contact with people this way. I have always thought that that was weird, but what's weirder is that apparently that is not a common thing in other places in the world. And uh, we learned that in the UK. Almost every experience that we had in the UK in a public restroom, the doors would come almost all the way to the top, all the way down to the bottom, or pretty close. Like there was a lot more privacy than you ever get here in the US, or in most cases anyway. And when you combine that with the fact that there are like fun, more interesting toilet features, there was a toilet where I pulled a lever on the top of the toilet and it flushed and that was like the most exciting adventure for me. I think we're gonna go to bed, huh? Are you tired too? I'm tired. We'll see you in the morning. Hello from Virginia City, Nevada. We've had a great day here today because it's very dog friendly, but that is not very common in the US. There's only a few towns and cities that are really truly dog friendly places. We definitely noticed while we were in England specifically that places were just a lot more dog friendly. Like we saw dogs pretty much everywhere we went. We typically 
in the US, most states do not allow you to bring dogs into pubs, restaurants, bars, any of that. It's very uncommon. But in the UK, we noticed that it was quite the opposite. Like dogs were allowed in a lot of places that they would not be here. Yeah, there was a lot more pubs and stuff like that where it was just like, bring your dog in. It was kind of nice. When we are in the US, we are traveling with our dog. And so I think maybe we noticed the places that we can't take her versus when we were in England, we didn't have her, but we were noticing all the places that we could have brought her. So that could be part of it. But I truly think that just overall, there is a much more dog friendly vibe all throughout everywhere we went. Our dog is an Italian Greyhound mix, and we don't see a lot of Italian Greyhounds in the US, but we saw quite a few, especially in York. We noticed a lot of them. So we were just appreciative that we saw so many little Iggies because we loved it. <laughs> fact for our Disney loving friends out there. The Fourth Ward School right here is one of the inspirations for Phantom Manor. Which our American friends might might not know is uh, very similar to the Haunted Mansion but in Paris, Disneyland Paris, it is Phantom Manor. Yeah, the outside of that building looks very similar. Looks very similar and there's a reason. It's one of the inspirations for it. I just I think that's really cool. It's cool. It's just a really cool looking building. driving down through Nevada, down through Arizona. We have stopped in the city of Scottsdale and we just had Cornish pasties at a place here called the Cornish Pasty Co. Which brings me to my next thing that we love and already miss about the UK and that is the food. Now we just ate some delightful Cornish pasties. Yeah. But I think that that is kind of just goes to show how much we really enjoyed the food in the UK. And I think people seem to think that it's a lot of beige food yeah. and that it's a lot of like fried beige food, which I mean, I mean some of that's some, true. But there's plenty of that here too. Exactly. And we had just amazing, amazing food all throughout the UK and tried some really unique things that we don't have here, you know, like steak and kidney pie yeah. and things like that. And the Cornish pasty. For me, I didn't love every single thing I tried, but like 99% of it was really good. Yeah, I don't really understand why it gets that weird connotation of having bad food. I agree. We definitely loved it. I can't wait till we go back and uh, have, have even more foods that we try because you guys told us some things that we missed, like um, jelly deals in London, which I'm not sure if I feel confident about how I'm gonna like those, but we're gonna try them next time. Being in Arizona in 110 degree weather, I was certainly not expecting it to start raining, but here we are. Anyway, it's it's raining now, so we're gonna continue on with our drive and our love of things we love in the UK. We have made it to Tombstone. We've actually been here for a couple weeks. We have had a really nice time checking out Tombstone for the first time and also visiting with Jeremy's dad who lives in the next town over. A really cool old mining town called Bisbee, Arizona. So excited to share the videos that we've made about these places with you. But in the meantime, I guess we gotta talk about more things we loved about the UK. What is one thing you loved about the UK? I think like the history and like the culture, which could range even from like walking around and seeing super old buildings to we're both kind of anglophile nerdy people that love music and stuff like that to go on like the music tour we went in London. Just this broad range of history of really cool stuff. That is a really good one. I think a perfect example for me of that was that we went to a cemetery in Edinburgh and it was older than any cemetery here in the US, unless you're considering like uh, Native American burial grounds. But it was just a really fascinating, beautiful cemetery. We've never seen anything like it here in the US. And so yeah, just I think seeing, I, I'm piggybacking off of what Jeremy say, said with just saying that, you know, seeing just all of the neat historic towns and cities and just everywhere we went, 
looked a little bit different than the last place and I just, I loved them all. I loved exploring all of them. Plus now you guys have given us so many suggestions on other places we should go see and things we should go do while we're there next time. We have already started planning our next trip or at least like doing the, like we haven't booked anything yet but we are starting to make our plans and kind of figure out what we want to do. So we are really excited to come back and do even more of the things that you guys suggested because um, you've given us a lot of amazing suggestions and I wish we could do them all, but hopefully uh, over time we will be able to. I think somewhat related to the, the culture and learning about the culture there. Also, I loved learning about our language differences. Like we all speak English, but our English tends to be quite different in a lot of ways. In America, we pronounce the word medieval as medieval. And um, several of you have told us that you say it differently. Some of you have tried to correct us and tell us we say it wrong, but we just say it the American way. Uh, but I guess in the UK, you pronounce it like, like an extra syllable, like medieval. Is that right? It sounds weird to me to say it because it's a word I've said so long, so many times as medieval that it sounds weird, weird to add an extra syllable. But I do love learning about our language differences. Like I had no idea that we said it differently. Some cities in the US use the word borough, like New York City um, has boroughs, uh, Pittsburgh has boroughs. Um, it's, it's not super common in the West, I don't think, but um, we call them boroughs, and we learned that we were saying it wrong, like you guys pronounce it like borough, borough market, or like Scarborough, I think, is how you do it. Or like, Ed I mean, Edinburgh, like any of those. So yes, we, we try to, anytime that we learn a place that is the name of the place and how the locals would say it, we definitely try to pronounce that correctly, and if you correct us, we will try to get it right next time. Um, however, there are some words that are different to us. Like we do not say medieval in the US. And honestly, that feels very strange to even try to say. I like, I like learning about it. Do you have any words that we say differently that you liked learning about? I mean, I knew about it before we went, but the aluminum is interesting <laughs> instead of aluminum that we'll say here. I also think so many phrases that we learned were just so polite. I just loved how proper and polite a lot of things sound. From the moment that we got off uh, out of the airport and onto the underground in London, it said, mind the gap. <laughs> Which I just think sounds so polite and proper and here in the United States we're like, watch your step. Do you watch your step? Why do you say that like an old timey carnival bark? <laughs> No. Okay, in America, our yield sign, we say yield, and the UK equivalent of that is give way, which I just, I think it just sounds more polite, and I love it. There, what? I don't know. Stand with like... me. <laughs> there is one more. <laughs> there is one more um, thing that I think it's worth mentioning, and that I think, well, I think part of it was confusing, but the fact that the tax is calculated into pricing is really nice. As Americans, we still had to do a little mind calculation with the conversion rate, but... At least you didn't have to add a sales tax on top of that. Yeah, which you exactly. you do most places here. And, a lot, and, and also a thing that's confusing to me is the tipping. Like, as Americans, it is just ingrained in us to tip at every single restaurant, pretty much. I mean, not like fast food, but you pretty much tip because our wages that's not built into yeah. it, but it made it confusing. Okay, I'm gonna show you. Before we came, I read this book and the actual book says that you're supposed to tip 10 to 12%. And so I'm over there trying to tip, I'm trying, it's like if people will handle your bags, I tried to tip a lady who held our luggage for us while we were in London and she was like, no thank you, you shouldn't tip me. And we were just very confused about what was appropriate and what wasn't. I think partially because even our guidebook indicated we should tip more often than we were uh, aware of. So I am just curious from you, this will definitely help us out for next time. Like what is the proper situation when you tip in a restaurant or a pub or, or a anywhere? Like when do you tip and when is it not necessary? Like when is it required? When is it optional? When is it like, why would you tip there? That's weird. I I'm just getting, want to know. Getting the feeling that it's 
there's never a place that you have to really, <laughs> but I don't know. I know and that's weird. I just feel like it, it feels weird because that's just such a big cultural difference, which I mean, it is what it is, but uh, it, it almost, for me, was almost a little bit more stressful because I, I wasn't quite sure when I should tip versus when I shouldn't. But you guys can let us know. So the next time, it'll just be another thing that we love about the UK. Those are just a few of the things that we loved about the UK. We obviously are gonna try to get back as soon as we can. Um, plans are still pending, but we do have some really exciting plans here, not only in the US, um, but we are working on some other travels as well. So I am very excited to share some of the stuff that we have coming up with you. And in the meantime, we are gonna be putting out a combination of uh, our videos from the US and the UK for a little while until our UK series is done. And then hopefully we will see you guys soon again. And maybe, maybe we can hang out with some of you because that's another thing I love about the UK is that uh, we, we met a lot of really cool people. We, ha we already have friends that are amazing that live there, but we have uh, met some really cool people there and a lot of you guys have given us so many amazing suggestions and maybe, maybe next time some of you can show us around. We'll see you soon, huh? And Carly will be there too. <laughs>